kind of some more things. And I'm looking around, I'm looking, I'm looking at these robots here. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. There's some things that these guys, these guys have requirements and stuff too. Maybe, you know what, Chris? I bet we can Please get do. a kid out here to help talk about this this process that we go through, and maybe they might have some things in common you with. You think? Them. Think? Yeah. Wonder if we can find just. Is there a volunteer who would is like there, to come out? Is there a student Somebody who raise would want to come out and talk with us? Raise your hand. Well, look, here's a totally random person that yeah, maybe we could get to here. come out. Awesome. Come, come on out. Come on out. And, hey. and what's your name, random person? Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Eric Thaddeus Sanders. Oh, man, shake your hand. Uh, I'm from Team 1741, Red Alert Robotics. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, we're, we're talking about our processes here, and you know, the, the first things that we do are we, we see some requirements from our customers. What, what, what are some of the requirements that you have when you make your design and, and your process? Um, well, we get most of our requirements, well, I guess all of them from first, like the, uh, when we get kickoff. We go to kickoff and we see the uh, video of the game. We find out what the game is. All the rules and specifications are given there, plus the big old fun fat rule book with all the, you know, do this, do this, do this, rules. Sounds, uh, well, sounds pretty good. So what, what do you do next? After you get your requirements in, what do you do? I mean, well, I, I want to know how you little guys do stuff. Yeah, OK. Well, we, we aren't brilliant like some of the Rolls-Royce engineers. We're not rocket scientists or anything. But we, we brainstorm, and we, we come up with different ways to, to make our thing. We, maybe we want to make this have three speeds or four speeds. We, we come up with all these ideas. We just brainstorm and, and try to see which ideas are the best. What do, you, what do you do? Well, actually, we do something very similar. We will get um, a lot of different people together. We'll get mechanical engineers. We'll get aerodynamics people. Uh, we get older, more experienced people. We get some you know, younger. Like you? Yeah, we get some younger people that really don't have any good ideas, but we're hoping to teach them some. OK. Um, we, we just kind of get a mix of people together and brainstorm ideas and come up with what we think is the best solution, put together uh, rubrics and things like that, and then try to pick a final design. How about you, Eric? What do you do? Oh, well, uh, we usually, you know, we like to go back and break into smaller groups, and each group will make up their own robot design, and we'll present the design to the entire group, and we'll use, uh, if you're in the PLTW classes, a design matrix, and, you know, which one? Sounds it's pretty best. impressive. Oh, yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I use good terminology. Um, <laughs> so. Well, that sounds, that sounds very familiar yeah. to what we're doing. Yeah. The next, the next thing we do is I think you guys do something called Inventor. Um, we use Unigraphics, and we will design that total engine in Unigraphics. We have computer models of all of the internal parts, of the, the way the flow works, so we can predict what the performance is going to be, how much air we need, what kind of fuel we need to burn. So a lot of that design is done electronically before we ever cut the first piece of metal. We do a whole lot of work just on the computer. So computer skills are very important. Well, I can't afford to make mistakes, so I got to design all this in CAD also. So we, we use Solid Edge. Do you guys use CAD? Yes, we, we do use Inventor. And being the previous Inventor captain, it's a very useful, te uh, useful. Wow, inventor captain. Oh, wow, that's, that's impressive. It's a prestigious. It's very prestigious. He um, might be a good team member someday. Huh? He might be a good team member someday. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the next thing we do is a lot of testing. I know that, you know, it's it's you, you can do a lot of great work on the computer, but the real test is when you get the engine, you put it together. We do a lot of testing of piece parts. We'll do compressor rigs and turbine rigs. Then we put the whole engine together, do a lot of testing. We have thousands of wires coming off the engine, measuring stress, measuring temperatures, because we need to know that what we're going to put out in the field is right. Well, this thing's been tested, actually, on these fields for the past six years. The iterations of this design started in 2002, and we eventually made it a product in 2005 a predecessor of this design, and now it became this design this year as a new product. So we've tested the, this a lot, the, the intricacies of the guts of this. Well, do you guys test your design, or do you just ship it away? Oh, no, we, we, usually, sh we usually test it. It's, uh, well, we like to build, if we can, this arena, or at least some part of it, and make sure that, you know, well, oops, we're going to run into the overpass. Right. That's not good. You know, and 
you know, all, lots of testing, it's good. Now, cool. where do you send that thing when you're done testing? Well, when, we, when we're done, we send it to helicopter OEMs. This engine goes to Bell Helicopter, goes to MD, um, a lot of other smaller companies, and, and really our real test is when our customer gets the engine. You know, so it's, it's important to us to ship on time. A lot of times we'll have financial deadlines, and so we've got to get the engine out when the customer needs it. What, you don't have to worry about that, do you? Well, we, if I don't have this thing ready for shipment when the, these teams need them, they're not getting sold. Some teams, even during week one of this, of this competition, they got to have it next day. And I try to do, we try to do our best to get it out so they get things the next day. Do you guys have ship requirements? Well, gosh, that's a good coincidence. We do. Um, we, we are allowed only Is there any penalty if you don't ship on time? Oh, no. If you don't ship on time, you are not going to be competing. Ooh, if it's not in the crate and ready to be picked up, you're, you're gone. That's pretty tough. Now for me, my last real big step is when my customer gets a product because the people, these, these engines are used in helicopters that fly for police, they fly for emergency medical. Um, I had a, we're, heard a statistic once that about every 15 minutes somebody's life is saved by a helicopter with one of these engines because they do so many emergency type things. So it's important that, that my products work first time, it starts, it flies, and it's safe. So for me, the real, the real test is when that product gets in the field, does it do exactly as performed? And my reputation personally and the reputation of Rolls-Royce is on the line, so it's very important to me. Speaking of reputation, if this thing doesn't work, I'm out of business. So this thing has, my customers have to get a good product and it needs to work right. So, and I, I appreciate my customers, so thank you. But, Excellent. So who are, who are your customers? Well, our customers are our sponsors, you know. Well, not to say, but Rolls Royce, for instance. That's, that's kind of fun. Yeah. And, that's uh, cool. All of our other sponsors, ding. Um, also, and also not just our sponsors, but all of our alliance members and other people that we're going to be playing with here at competition. If our robot fails them during a, comp uh, during a match, you know, that's really bad for both us and them. You know, Andy, it's, it's really, I, this really wasn't what I was expecting, but it's kind of interesting. It sounds like what the first kids do and what you do as a small business and what I do in a big business, they all seem pretty similar. It's, it's like, the same thing. Yeah, it's almost like they're learning skills that could be useful when they graduate from college, maybe go to work for a small company or big company, something like that. Well, he, these, these might be marketable skills they're learning. They're learning things that I want to hire, and I, I want to hire him before you do. Well, I want to hire him for more money. Well, okay. <laughs> but uh, you're gonna have to step it up. Yeah, we'll we'll try. We'll try. Um, you know, I think we're about out of time. We are. But I think we have to run the commercial. This this sounds like a commercial moment. It doesn't it sound like a commercial moment? I'm gonna get back here by my product. Eric, let the commercial roll. Andy Mark Super Shifter, three hundred sixty dollars. Rolls Royce Model Two Hundred and Fifty, six hundred fifty horsepower turbine engine, five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Creating the first experience for students, priceless. Some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's NASA grades. You know, I once heard that Andy Baker sat down and got bored, so he counted to infinity twice, but that might just be a rumor. I don't really know. <laughs> All right, there's another really important group of people here today. You may have recognized them from yesterday. They worked really hard to give you some hardware. On the count of three, let's give our judges a huge thank you. One, two, Three, thank you.